and sometimes we want to train a you know a sparse model okay uh, the sparse model just means like uh, um, the model is slimmer there are a lot of connections with like uh, zero weight okay so that the computation can be done faster okay um, which is uh, which makes the uh, sparse models uh, better suited for the uh, embedded systems okay um, so uh, if you want to train a model that you know to be more sparse okay one way to achieve that is to you know uh, um, um, use like a strong uh, L1 okay L1 uh, uh, um, uh, regularization okay which can sort of like uh, uh, get rid of like uh, the, s the connection with uh, smaller weights okay and uh, make those uh, to be zero okay and uh, you can also like uh, you know train the model as usual and get rid of the tiny weights okay so manually set those tiny weights to be zero okay but if you do that okay although, I mean although you can get a sparse model it may degrade the model performance okay so as I say I mean using L L1 regularization okay during training okay is a probably better way okay and uh, another technique okay is the pruning technique that you can consider okay there are a lot of like uh, um, pruning tools available okay um, which is called like a model optimization toolkit or called T TensorFlow TFMOT okay uh, this uh, toolkit provide uh, a, a lot of pruning API which is able to iteratively remove connections during training based on their magnitude so um, if you are interested in you know training a sparse model so this is the TFMOT is uh, uh, something you can check out okay uh, we probably will not talk about this uh, in this class but uh, I just want to give you a direction okay uh, that you can you know check out when, um, when you have more experience and you want to train a sparse model okay and the, so far okay uh, all the optimizers that we have uh, covered okay are listed in this table and uh, basically okay uh, we also list their convergence speed in general okay I mean of course like uh, the, the, the one with three stars based normally means like uh, they converge faster but uh, you know um, so um, pretty much like uh, momentum or NAG you know they they converge well but uh, not as fast as those like uh, adaptive optimizers okay not 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 as fast but uh, in terms of the model quality after uh, the training is done okay uh, the the non-adaptive optimization technique normally will give you a better it will guarantee uh, the model perform better um, for error grade as I already mentioned it only work for very 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 simple models such as uh, linear regression okay for deep learning we normally do not use ADA grade okay but for RMS prop Adam Naden Max, okay really uh, um, their the model performance okay if you use them to train the model it really depends on the data set okay uh, if the data set un, is not allergic to uh, the adaptive uh, optimization then you know they normally the model will normally perform well okay and you get a fast convergence speed which is nice but on, on, on the other hand if you get a, a model that is uh, not that does not generalize very well okay then you may want to consider using either momentum or NAG to train the model okay even though they are slower but they will normally give you the model with a better performance okay 
So then the next uh, topic that we are going to cover today is the learning rate scheduling, okay? So we know finding a good learning rate is important. I already talked about that, uh, um, you know, earlier. So if you set it too high, training may diverge. If you set it too low, then it will take a long time to converge, okay? If you set it slightly too high, you will make progress very quickly at first but you will end up dancing around the optimum. So, um, so you are not going to get a good performance, okay? Um, so unless you use adaptive learning rate optimization. So, um, you know, those adaptive optimization, as I said, they, they will adjust the learning rate, you know, uh, you know uh, uh, during the model training. So, you know, um, such as Ada grade, Ames prop, Adam, okay? So, but even then, it may take time to settle, okay? So if you have a limited computing budget, so you may have to interrupt training before the converge, okay, happens. So it, it may, you may result in a suboptimal solution, so, you know, here, just to tell you, okay, we just want to tell you that learning rate is important, okay? So here, I just want to show you a figure that, I mean, with the different uh, learning curve, okay? So when eta, the learning rate is too high, it, it might the, the model training may diverge. If uh, the, the learning rate is good, you can see this uh, uh, orange line, okay? Oh, sorry, if that's too small, okay, learning rate too small. So it converge slowly. So it may, it may take a long time to converge, okay? So uh, if your learning rate is just slightly too high, okay, what happens is that it, 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 the model converge quickly initially, but you can see that it stays, you know, the, the, the loss stays you know, high, okay, you know, eventually. So we get a suboptimal solution, uh, uh, solution because uh, uh, we may, you know, the, 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 the training may dance around in the optimal, I mean, uh, around the optimal uh, solution. So, so we don't get like uh, the optimal one, okay? Um, so this green, this uh, green line indicate, okay, you have uh, exactly good learning rate, so you can see that, okay, it converge fast and uh, it goes down to a very low uh, loss, okay, which is very nice. But uh, we know that it takes a lot of effort to find this, uh, you know, right learning rate. So here we want to ask a question, is there a good way that we, you know, first, we want to quickly find, I mean, uh, I mean, a way, okay, uh, to set the learning rate so that it converge, you know. And uh, second, okay, uh, it converge well. Not only that, the second, we want it to be, I mean, even faster. It, we want the converge to happen to be even faster than the, the best learning rate. Is it possible? Yes. You can see that if we use, initially, if we use a slightly larger learning rate, so we are initially take this uh, purple line, but after certain point, okay, we switch to a to a different learning rate, a, a lower learning rate, okay. So what happens is that you can see uh, eventually we have this dotted uh, uh, learning curve, and you can see this dotted learning curve may even perform, I mean, may perform even better than the no, the best learning rate we can have, okay? So, so this is like a, um, why we consider what we call like a learning rate scheduling, okay? In the learning rate scheduling, basically we adaptively, adaptively uh, adjust the learning rate so that, you know, so that we, we, will, we would like to achieve something like this. Okay, we can dynamically change the learning rate so that, you know, it, it, it will, you know, normally, okay, uh, we will 
normally, okay, this is not always the case, but normally we will, we will start with a larger learning rate, but a gradually shrink it, okay? That's the basic idea of like a, a learning rate scheduling, okay? So, um, yeah, I think I, I went through this, uh, um, so there are different learning rate, uh, learning rate schedule, schedules, okay? Uh, here, okay, in this textbook, we are going to discuss five different uh, scheduling. One, the first one is power scheduling, the second one is exponential scheduling, the third one is piecewise constant scheduling, the fourth one is performance scheduling, the last one is called one cycle scheduling. Okay, so we are going to go over all of these, okay, quickly, okay? Hopefully we can finish this uh, topic today, okay? The first one is called power scheduling, okay? The idea, the, the formula that we use is something like this, okay? So, so eta is a function of t, so where this t represent, represent the iteration number, okay? So eta t is eta zero divided by one plus t over s, to the power of c, okay? So you can see there are several hyperparameters here. The first one is eta zero. The second one is s. The third one is c. Oh, t is not a hyperparameter, okay? Because t represents number of iterations, okay? So c is normally set to be one, okay? So we normally do not adjust this c, okay? Um, and this formula basically, okay, when C is one, it basically just means like, uh, okay, at the, at the very beginning, the learning rate is eta zero. After S number of iteration, the eta, the learning rate is cut into half. Okay, eta zero divided by two. And uh, after another S iterations, it becomes eta zero divided by three. Okay, and so on. So you can imagine, okay, every S iteration, okay, the eta zero, I mean, we, the, 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 start, the denominator uh, value increased by one, right? So you can see that, okay, the learning rate actually s reduced slower and slower here, right? Okay, so, okay, so this is what we call power scheduling, okay? So, so, of course, I mean, we need to find a good value for eta zero and the s, okay? Uh, possibly c, but we normally do not adjust the c here, okay? So, okay. So even though it is named power scheduling, in reality, it's, it, the learning rate reduced really slow. Okay, learning rate reduced really slow. It's not as powerful as you may think, okay? So the second one is called exponential scheduling, okay? And uh, basically, okay, it's going to be eta t to going to be eta zero times 0 0.1 to the, power, to the power t divided by s. So in this formula, you can see that every s iteration Every s iteration, the 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 eta, the, the learning rate, is reduced by ten times, right? Every s iteration, the uh, learning rate is reduced by ten times, and uh, this reduction rate remains the same, right? For every s iterations, okay. Every s s iteration reduced by ten times. Every s iteration is reduced by ten times. So this is, this reduction, okay, is actually very, very fast, okay? This is called exponential schedule because, well, the, the learning rate reduction happens exponentially, okay? The third one is called piecewise constant schedule. This is very, very simple. Basically, it's just like uh, every couple of uh, epochs, okay, we, we change the, the, the learning rate to a certain number, okay? So for example, okay, um, you know, 
uh, eta zero to be 0 0.1 for the, for the first five epochs. Then we change it to a smaller one, such as 0 0.001 for the next 50 epochs, and so on. Okay, so this is, uh, 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 you know, piecewise constant scheduling. Okay, so if you compare the piecewise constant scheduling, you will see that it requires uh, us to find out not only the right sequence of learning rates, but also how long each uh, learning rate okay, value will be used. Okay, how many iteration, how many epochs each learning rate will be used. So, so we end up need to find like a lot of, I mean there are a lot of hyperparameters that we need to consider in the piecewise constant scheduling. Okay, so to be honest, I mean this is you know, actually not that uh, easy to decide, okay? I mean, because originally our issue is to find the optimal learning rate, right? Now we need to find a lot of uh, uh, good values. So this is actually not that helpful, okay? Actually, okay? The first one is called performance scheduling, okay? Performance scheduling is kind of like, uh, remember the early stop, Early stop. What is early stop? Do you guys do remember? Basically, we, we use like uh, the validation error, right? If the validation error do not reduce for a certain number of epoch, we stop the training, right? So the performance scheduling basically is similar, okay? If the validation error does not go down for certain number of epoch, then we reduce the learning rate. Okay, the only difference is between the st early stop and uh, this performance scheduling is that, okay, you know, is the action that, that that is taken. Okay, I mean the early stop, we we, we if uh, validation error does not go down. Okay, for for the patients number of epoch, we we cut it, we just re, you know stop the training. But here we just you know reduce the the I mean the learning rate, normally by half. I mean, but uh, you can basically can by a factor of lambda. Okay, in general, by a factor of lambda. So, the, la the last one is called the one cycle scheduling. Okay, this one cycle scheduling is kind of complicated. Okay, which is actually proposed in 2018 paper uh, by Leslie Smith, okay. So this, this one cycle scheduling starts by increasing the initial learning rate, okay, eta zero, going linearly up to eta one, okay. Again, during the second half of training, uh, sorry, halfway through the training, okay, then decrease linear, uh, the learning rate linearly again, down to eta zero, again, during the second half of training. Finishing the last few epochs by dropping the rate down by several order of magnitude, still linearly, okay? Then the maximum learning rate, eta one, is chosen using the same approach we use to find the optimal learning rate. And the initial learning rate, eta zero, uh, is roughly 10 times lower, okay? So basically, okay, eta one is normally the optimal learning rate, but eta zero is 10 times lower. So you can see that we, we start from a lower learning rate and growing linearly to the optimal learning rate and then going down to the lower learning rate again. Okay, so this, this approach is kind of strange, okay, kind of strange. And also, okay, when, you, when we use the momentum, okay, optimize, optimization with, with this uh, one cycle scheduling, then we start with a high momentum then drop down to a lower momentum, okay? So it's, there are a lot of like a small, like a, uh, things that you need to consider in this approach. But even though, okay, this is, I would say this is complicated, okay? This is complicated, okay? But, uh, okay, uh, the Leslie Smith, okay, did many experiments to show that this approach, okay, 
often is able to often to speed up the training considerably and reach better performance. Okay, for example, okay, on like a CIFA CIFA 10 image database uh, data, data set. Okay, this CIFA 10 uh, image data set is uh, again one famous image data set that is used for uh, one competition. Okay, and. Uh, um, this approach, this one cycle scheduling, okay, uh, reaches 91.9 .9 validation accuracy, okay, with in just 100 epochs, okay, but uh, if you use like a standard approach, it requires 800 epochs, and uh, the 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 accuracy is only 90.3 percent. So you can see that it's uh you know even though the I mean this 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 increase okay. 1.6 percent is considered significant because, uh, uh, yeah, the, the accuracy is already above 90 percent, right? So, so 1.6 percent is is considered big, okay? And also, you know, this number of epochs for the training we, you know, reduce eight times, uh, sorry, eight times, right? Eight times. So this is, uh, you know, they show that this is good, but but to be honest with you, okay. This, appro this approach is kind of complicated, okay? It's complicated. So, uh, what should I say? I mean, I probably wouldn't recommend you, okay? They are, they are you know, the, the exponential uh, scheduling is perhaps like the easiest one, and you can get pretty good performance already, okay? And, uh, you know, it has, uh, also has uh, fewer param hyperparameters to, to tune, okay, for exponential scheduling, okay? So, a 2013 paper by Andres Senior, okay, uh, of course, in 2013, you can imagine, one cycle scheduling wasn't proposed, right? One cycle scheduling was proposed in 2018. So, in 2013, okay, only the other four scheduling was considered in this paper, okay? And uh, they compare the performance of uh, some of the most popular learning schedules when using momentum optimization to train uh, uh, DNN for speech recognition. And uh, the conclusion is that, okay, uh, both performance scheduling and the exponential scheduling perform well. So they favor exponential scheduling because it was easy to tune and they converge slightly faster than optimal solution to optimal solution. So they also mentioned that it was easier to implement than performance scheduling, but uh, Keras has, um, you know, uh, in Keras you don't need to worry about implementation. I mean, they, they are, they are, I mean, both very easy to, to set up, okay? So the one cycle approach seemed to perform even better, but, but even when we say that, as I said, okay, one cycle scheduling, it may have a better performance, but it's complicated. You may want to really like uh, uh, study uh, uh, a little bit more before you use one cycle schedule, okay? So uh, for the implementation, okay, uh, the power and the exponential scheduling in Keras is uh, it's very easy, okay? For example, to implement the power scheduling, okay, uh, just set the DK hyperparameter, okay, when creating optimize, okay? For example, here, SGD, and we set DK to be uh, 10 to the power of negative four. Okay, the DK basically is the inverse of S. Remember, S represents like uh, how many steps is required to increase the uh, denominator by one. Remember, okay, in the power scheduling, and uh, here we if we set the DK to be ten to the power of negative four, that means uh, that S value is the inverse of this, which is like uh, 10, uh, 10,000. Okay, 10,000. Okay, 10 to the power of 4. Okay, pretty much. Okay? So if you want like, uh, to use different S value, of course you can set DK I mean, at, in different value. Okay? So, uh, and Keras assumes that C is equal to, equal to 1. As I said, like, uh, I mean, in power scheduling, we normally assume C to be 1. Okay? For exponential scheduling and piecewise scheduling, okay? They are quite simple to I mean, too, okay. But of course, we we need to first uh, define a function, okay, 
which takes the current epoch and returns the learning rate. So, for example, for exponential decay, okay, we define this exponential decay function, okay, which takes the epoch. So it will return 0 0.01 times, this 0 0.01 means that eta 0, right, eta 0, times this, you know, 0 0.1 to the power of epoch divided by 20. So every 20 epochs, we are going to, you know, reduce the learning rate by 10 times. So we first create this function. Okay, if you do not want to hard code the eta zero and the s, then you can you can you know you, you can create a function something like this to make uh, eta zero and s to be the pra the 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 pra parameter. Okay, for this function, but be, um, well, you get idea. I mean, this is um, pretty much like uh, easy. Okay, I mean, pretty I mean very simple. Okay, just like um, you know. Implement, this is just like an implementation of the function in, in not in Keras, in, but in Python, okay? So I, I, I don't think I need to go into detail for this, okay? So, and then, okay, with this function, okay, we, you know, create a learning rate scheduler callback. We give this callback that scheduling function and pass this callback to fit method, okay? So it's something like this learning rate scheduler object to be this callback, learning rate scheduler, and we pass this function here, okay, and then in the fit, uh, uh, when we call fit, okay, to train the model, we pass this LR scheduler, okay, as one of the callbacks, okay, and that's it, okay, so um, pretty much uh, it's going to, uh, the learning rate scheduler will adjust the learning rate, okay, at the beginning of each epoch automatically, okay. Uh, if you want to, uh, you know, this uh, learning rate to be updated more often, okay, for example, at every step, then you can write your own callback. I think I talked about like uh, how you can write your call own callback earlier, right? Okay, we have like a control, like uh, for example, at the beginning of the epoch, at end of epoch, at the beginning of iteration, at end of the iteration, you know, a lot of this like a control for the callback, okay, you can, you can write your program by yourself, okay. So, so in a, uh, we, we even have like, a, you know, uh, exponential scheduling, uh, the, I mean, section of the notebook, okay, uh, that is provided by uh, the textbook and you can check out, okay. So, so updating the learning rate at every step makes sense if there are many steps per epoch, okay. So it depends on your setting, pretty much. So alternatively, you can use the keras.optimizers.schedules approach, okay, to, to do that, but uh, we'll describe, I mean, later, okay. So uh, the schedule function can opt optionally take the current learning rate as a second argument, okay. So for example, okay, here, okay, um, we define the exponential decay function, okay, similar to the previous one, okay. So this implementation relies on the optimizer's initial learning rate, okay. Um, but I think this is the quite uh, uh, like a, like a, uh, detail, okay. So when you save a model, oh, this is important. When you save a model, okay, you save like a pretty much the, I mean, the optimizer and the learning rate will also get saved, okay? But, but, the epoch, okay, for example, say you train this model for 1,000, uh, for 100 epochs already, okay? So everything will be saved, saved. but uh, the, the number of epochs will not be saved. So if you restore this model and then you want to train it again, it will, it will, the epoch number will start from one. Okay, but uh, you know, remember, in in our implementation, a lot of like uh, this uh, learning rate scheduling, okay, depends on the, the the number of epoch, right? So if the epoch starts from one again, you are going to use a large learning rate, right? And if this model is already well trained, right? At least you have trained for maybe one hundred epoch already, right? So you don't want to use like uh, the large 
learning rate anymore, right? To train this, to continue training this model, right? So, so what you do is that, okay, um, you know, you want to, you know, when you train it, like uh, when you restore this model, I mean, if you want to train it from, say, like uh, 101 epoch, then you can use like a uh, initial epoch argument, okay, in the fit method to specify, oh, this is 101 epoch, okay, so that the those uh, learning rate schedule knows that, oh, this is the 100